Hello everyone, Michael here, and this is the Doji V20 5G Rugged Phone, and before we torture it to death, let me tell you a little bit about it. This phone is designed to take some serious pain. The entire frame is wrapped with thick metal and polycarbonate, with a massive drop protective rim all the way around the frame, with further raised points on each corner for drop protection, and the back panel is made from what Doji say is a military grade carbon fiber. The ports are sealed off. You have to pop the SIM card slash micro SD protector using a tool to get access and it's the same story with the USB-C port. There's a side mounted fingerprint scanner on the right hand side which is not the fastest but works well enough and on the left hand side there is a special functionality button which I have personally set to one press to activate the flashlight, two taps for my favorite app and a long press gets you the SOS options and you can customize this as you wish. The V20 has a 1080p AMOLED screen which comes with a hard glass screen protector and another spare in the box and there is also a second screen on the back which gives you basic time and battery info as well as notifications, music controls and incoming call options which again are all customizable in the settings. There is also a 20 megapixel night vision camera which really does work well in complete darkness and you can take pictures with this but unfortunately there is no video mode yet. There is also a 64 megapixel main sensor which is fine, nothing impressive at all but enough to get the job done as well as an 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor and 16 megapixel selfie shooter. Video goes up to 1440p but doesn't look that great and unfortunately there's no stabilization. We also have a gigantic 6000 milliamp hour battery as well as 33 watt fast charging and 15 watt wireless charging. The phone runs Android 11 and pretty much has a completely stock Android feeling. It also comes with 8GB of RAM plus 256GB of storage and running the phone is an octa-core 2.2Hz chipset. But the most important part is the V20's multiple protective ratings, which on this phone is IP68 for a maximum water depth of 1.5 meters for 30 minutes, IP69K provides protection against ingress of dust, high temperatures and high water pressure for washing down dirty equipment and MIL STD 810G that protects against high and low temperatures, temperature shock, humidity, freezing and solar radiation. So without further ado, let's put all of that to the test. So we're going to order the tests from the least severe all the way up to the most impactful. Basically, we're going to keep going until this phone breaks. Easing us into the first test is the flick knife, and it does end up leaving some visual scratch marks on the carbon fiber back, but this is not at all surprising. There's not much damage on the metal sides either, but if we scratch that functionality button, there are a few marks there. Moving on to the rubbery outer rim, it obviously has a tougher time against the knife, with chunky shapes being taken away from the frame. But to be fair, this is with a lot of force. The cameras and back screen survive some light scratching and still work intact when I test them out. Next up is the funeral test. We're going to bury the Doji V20 in the ground and see how well the protective seals do when completely covered in soil. Remember, this is the test of the phone's IP69K rating, which should protect it from dust intake, although this is a little more extreme. After we resurrect the Doji from its shallow grave, the speakers, which I thought would be the most vulnerable, appear to be working just fine. The screen is also all good, and the cameras and microphone are also in fine shape. Next is a drop test from around 2.29 meters, which is a way higher height than what a normal person would usually hold their phone at. Now I actually repeated this drop test over three times from the same height. And at the end of that, I decided to give it one more test for good luck. On for good luck. And sure enough, the screen powered on with a tap of the fingerprint scanner, the microphone picked up my voice, the cameras were fine, and the speakers also survived. Now the glass on the front did smash, though it does have the screen protector on, which I was going to wait till the end of the video to take off to see how much damage was actually done to the screen, 
but unfortunately, as you will see later in the final test, that wasn't really possible. Next was a staircase drop test, which measured about 3.24 meters down. Swing. And after a straight drop, the screen looked relatively unscathed. Cameras were again fine, but unfortunately we did lose some speaker power with only a tiny amount of sound being audible. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how much punishment this has taken so far without serious damage. Next was a cold water test. This water had been refrigerated for a few hours, and after placing the doji phone inside, I put it in the freezer at around minus 4.5 degrees for around 45 minutes. Now this test did have an effect, with the fingerprint scanner refusing to unlock the phone. The cameras were a little hazy, but overall okay. Da -da -da -da. One. But after a while, although I did not capture it on camera, the fingerprint scanner did start to work again. So we continued the test, this time a mammoth drop test where we accurately, efficiently and scientifically measured a distance of 7.2 meters. And then, well, bombs away. Now this I thought would really do some damage, but surprisingly the screen seemed to survive quite well without any major damage. The microphone worked, the back screen survived, but the cameras I'm afraid were damaged and refused to connect no matter what I did. But for the most part, you could still use most of the phone's functions after many rounds of harsh testing. Next up was the second from last test, a swift baseball bat hit to the back lower panel. As it turned out though, I probably should have put this to last. Okay, can you turn mine off? Oh. Oh. If we slow it down, we can see just after initial impact the screen protector being ripped apart from the foam. And on closer inspection, the screen does appear to be slightly damaged. We can even see a little bit inside the phone. Part of the frame has been bent away, but the overall shape to the phone is still consistent. The back panel looks completely undamaged and there is still power and I can feel the haptics firing when I push some of the buttons. So not completely dead, but enough to say this is where this torture test ends. Kind of. Just had to get that back screen panel off. The Doji V20 really did put up a good fight, but unfortunately it wasn't enough to be set on fire at the end. Maybe next time. And there will be a next time, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss anything, and help me out by smashing that like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.